Hello and welcome back. In this video, we are going to explore a bit more about Sahi Script Editor. Now this is the script that we have recorded till now. Our first step toward making this much more efficient would be to create functions out of this script. Now Sahi Script Editor provides a nice little utility to create functions just by selecting the lines of code and clicking a button to create the function. Now let's see that in action. In this script, if you look through line 2 and 4, you can see that these three lines, these are relevant to the function of logging in into the application. So in Sahi Script Editor, what you can do is, you can select these three lines, click on create function and provide in your function name to create the function. Now let's call this function training underscore login. And click on continue you can see that the function is created over here and a proper function call with the correct parameters have been made at line number 10 similarly you can create another function for adding books to your shopping cart now you can see that from line number 12 to 15 these four lines they are basically adding the books to our cart so you can select these four lines of code click on create function Again provide a function name, let's say training underscore add books. You can also change the name of the function parameters to suit your needs. So we know that these books are for Java, Ruby and Python. So I can change my variable to have some meaningful name. Again we click on continue. You can see that the second function is created as well. Similarly you can create a couple of more functions. Now in this line we are just asserting whether the value of textbox total is correct or not. So we can call this training underscore verify total and let's create a logout function as well. Alright now we have four functions with us. And these functions are being called in our script. Let's play the script back again. And this time we are going to play it back from the editor itself. To play back from the editor, you can click on this playback button. You can see that the script directory as well as the script file is pre-populated by Sahi. You can select one or more browsers from here. This shows the browsers from your browser underscore types.xml. So you can basically select a browser from here. You need to provide a start URL from where the execution will start and this is the URL from where we want to start our execution. You might have noticed that we have a underscore navigate to statement in our script and in some time we are going to change that to make it much more efficient and much more relevant but for now we are going to provide a start URL which will be the same as our navigate to URL and you can ignore the rest of the settings. We are just going to select run in parallel and threads equal to 5 and click on the run. A Chrome browser launches and it will execute all the steps real fast and at the end of it, it will show you the playback status down here and it says success on Chrome for training 1.sh. Now if you look at this particular script, you can see that we have created functions out of the script but still the functions are residing in the same file as we created the script. Now this is not very useful because we would like to use these functions at some other place as well. So what I'm going to do next is create a new Sahi script by going to this new menu and selecting a script. I will copy over all the functions and paste them here. And now I'm going to save this script as training underscore library dot sh. Because it is going to act as a sort of library for all our functions. So we'll be creating functions and putting all the functions in this library file so that this file can be included into our scripts. Now if we come back to this particular script, you can see that we have the function calls for training underscore login, training underscore add books and similarly for these two functions. But right now Sahi has no way of knowing where these functions are defined. 
we need to give it a sort of directive as to where to find these functions. Now, if you go to the context editor right now and you click on a function name, it displays the function name and path of the file which contains the function. So you can see that it says training underscore library.sh which is also present in the scripts folder. And it also shows you the arguments that are being passed to this particular function and they are num java, num ruby and num python. Now what I can do from here is I can click on this include button and it is going to include the file that contains these functions. So after including this file I can save this and then I am going to execute this script once more. Now you can also look at the logs from this editor itself. Now what you can do is you can click the logs link over here and it is going to open a new tab for you. This is the script we executed right now training underscore one dot sh and if you click onto it you will see that these logs are a bit different from what we have seen earlier. If you recognize the function names these are the functions that we just called in our script. And if you click on the plus sign, you can see that it shows the steps that were executed as a part of the function call. Now this kind of a log gives you a much more business sense as to what is going on in the script. Now it is a good idea to have functions from your script so that they can be reused at different places. This will save you a lot of time and maintenance because if you need a change you can make it at one place in the function and it will percolate down to every script that is using that function. Now the editor contains a lot more than what I have shown you just now. It is very similar to an ID that you might be used to but it is built very specific towards Sahi and development of Sahi scripts. As we go along the series I'll show you much more of what this Sahi script editor can do. In the next video we are going to take a look at the Sahi controller and what abilities it provides us while automating an application. Now if you have any questions you can leave them below in the comments or you can send us an email at support at the rate Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.